She inched away, pain shooting through her left shoulder and down her side and surprising her into stillness. She struggled to remember what she had been doing before she went to bed, a memory like the smallest thread she could pull and trace back to a sweater, but was unable to think beyond her sore body and the throbbing inside her skull. She couldn't remember anything. What if he slipped something in my drink and brought me here without me knowing? Her senses were instantly on high alert. As slowly as she could, she eased away from the man and rolled from the couch onto the floor, the movement once again throwing pain through half her body and making her previous headache seem like child's play. Those pale blue eyes seemed to rake through my brain, separating truth from falsehood. I'm powerless. I did lie. I didn't see who attacked me. I don't know what race he was, what he looked like, but I'm sure, I'm positive, that it wasn't Ty. A muscle begins to twitch in Coughlin's jaw. Maybe it wasn't Griggs himself who attacked you, but he was behind it. He set you up. I don't believe that. Ethel's ears perk up at the high-pitched anxiety in my voice. Ty has worked hard to turn his life around. I gave him a break when he needed one. He likes me. He would never hurt me or let someone else hurt me. Let me tell you something about criminals, Audrey. The most successful ones are friendly, charming, likable. They're able to separate their criminal behavior from their day-to-day -day life. I knew a hitman for the mob who was a freaking Little League coach. They lie. They lie so well, they believe their own lies. They're sociopaths. A sociopath. She emerged from her apartment, the sound of snoring audible from various rooms on her floor, only to find her path blocked. Lee gave her a cocky smile. Good morning, Sam. What now, Lee? she asked, her pain making her extra cranky. Sam scratched at her tattoo, feeling the draw of her gift. Vampires healed supernaturally, unlike the Fae. All she had to do was take a little of his power to heal her hand and rid herself of the iron poisoning. Sam took a deep breath, willing herself not to steal from him. She had already taken more from Lee than she usually took from anyone in a month or even a year. Sam was no thief. As I said yesterday, I need a favor from you. I'm not dealing with the vampires, Lee, and you know that. See, the thing is, we know about Carl. What about Carl? We know about his favorite pastime. Sam worked to keep her expression neutral. So far, Lee hadn't said anything actually incriminating against Carl. It could all be a ruse. And his technology, added Lee when Sam didn't respond. Sam felt her stomach clench in fear. Carl's mass of black market technology could land him in solitary for a year. Or worse, if Lee actually made good on his threat, her best friend could die.